Somebody say persimmon? Uh, now that I got you guys' attention, um, we're going to talk all about persimmons today. Particularly hardy varieties of persimmon. And it's pretty important that I want to mention that uh, all persimmon should be grafted on American persimmon rootstock, uh, Virginiana. All right, it's pretty important. You can go with Lotus, but I think a lot of people agree that Virginiana is just a tad bit harder. Uh, a really nice rootstock to have. You can graft all kinds of things on it, Asians, hybrids, Americans, and get really good results. All right, so you know that's what we're talking about in terms of rootstock when we're talking about varieties. They all should be on that, that particular rootstock. Um, yeah, I have a spreadsheet here you guys have looked at before, I'm sure, but if you haven't, it's in the, you know, the description of this video. Every single video I put out, the link to this spreadsheet is in that, um, in that description. And we have all kinds of different things. Cold hardy figs. We've heart, we've yet to do, even though we've created the sheet, we've yet to do one on persimmons, but hopefully this video will kind of help you guys out a little bit, kind of comb you guys over and that doesn't make any sense, but you know, help you guys out, uh, in the meantime while I'm trying to figure out exactly what list I want to create and how I want to create it and you know all that all that jazz so a couple reps websites I'd recommend uh, we got England's nursery uh, you know what it's nut trees nut trees .net. sorry there England sorry there uh, cliff but uh, basically you know we got uh, England's nursery here and they're pretty damn good with persimmons I have to say they're they're on it right if one, if one thing that Cl uh, Cliff really is passionate about, I'd probably say it's persimmons and he knows his shit. Uh, excuse my language, but you know, there's a whole bunch of different crazy people out there. Jerry Lehman, all these people are breeding these things together to kind of get hardier persimmons. And I think even some universities, some uh, breeding programs are coming together with this kind of thing as well. Um, look at this, James Claypool, he's another guy, okay? So basically, they're trying to breed different things together. Like, they're trying to put the American persimmon with the Asian persimmon. You don't know what I'm talking about? Go back and watch my videos, other videos on persimmons. Because we talk all about, you can show you guys my trees outside. We get to, you know, taste test the fruit. Go watch that video, catch up the speed and what, what I'm talking about here. But basically, there's Americans, which are really hardy trees, native to Native American, or <laughs> native, to, native to the Americas, right? And then you got some Asian persimmons, which are found in Asia, obviously, right? And uh, I guess some point or another, they brought over to America, or maybe the Americans brought it over to China. I don't know how it worked out, but you know, I think we they immigrated from China over to the United States or over to the Americas, and that's how we brought in, I guess, persimmons, right? Is that right? Who knows? But basically, they've evolved and they have different characteristics, right? The American persimmons are hardier. The Asian persimmons, on average, are tastier right uh, maybe even bigger a lot, lot bigger actually some of them can get much bigger so what they're trying to do now with all these different breeding programs all these different interesting people that are obsessed with persimmons they're breeding them together and creating hybrids American Asian persimmon hybrids and these hybrids are pretty well known now uh, I would say and here's a good one here let's see let's see let's see we're on edible landscaping they're also really good source guys for any of your questions regarding hardiness because they're only in zone 7 they're in a little bit of a warm zone 7 probably maybe 7b um, maybe even 7a but I think they're in a 6 they're in like a 7b 7a type thing maybe even in 7b but anyway the point is they really know their stuff and they have been you know they've had their nursery there for years and they've had a lot of these fruit trees on that nursery for years so they know what lives what takes damage and what is actually hardy right they can make a lot of these recommendations based off their own experience where something like uh just fruits and exotics you know great nursery they have a great persimmon selection but uh how much of their recommendations can we really trust on hardiness if they're in florida right um maybe they've got someone in other locations that they're they're uh they're testing a lot of these things with i don't know but I think it's better to really trust people that have been doing this themselves and figure out, okay, this is what everybody recommends. You know, this is a good choice to go with. Um, people like England, England's Nursery here, they're really trialing a lot of these things. I mean, they're really trying to get 
an Asian persimmon that's quite hardy that's not astringent, right? That's the goal. That's the goal with a lot of these growers, guys. I mean, they're in Kentucky and they're trying to find, like I said, an Asian persimmon that's not astringent. And they found one here called uh, Chinabuli. I don't know how to pronounce that, okay? But basically, this was their big one for a while. And, you know, he says here, tested up to negative 16 degrees Fahrenheit. I've actually later talked to Cliff, and he lost a whole lot of them, I think, this past winter. So, you know, this variety may change. He, I don't know if he's going to continue selling it or not. But the point is, there's a lot of these, you know, um, non-astringent Asian persimmons that are trying to be bred and trying to be cultivated to become a really hardy, uh, you know, not astringent Asian persimmon. And I think that's really hard to find. The uh, the more astringent ones are certainly less hardy to find or less hard to find. There, a lot of them already exist, right? We got things like uh, if I go up here to oh you know what? we completely skipped over these hybrids, but basically these hybrids, guys. Some of them here, Nikita's gift. This is one of the hybrids. I don't know if they sell Rosianka. Ah, okay. Well, they talk about it, but basically. Uh, you know, Rosianka and uh, Nikita's Gift are the two biggest ones right now that are being sold as the hybrids. And these things go down to quite far, right? Zone 5 to 8 for Nikita's Gift. If we go on uh, Just Fruits and Exotics website, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Rosianka and Nikita's Gift. I think there's some other ones, to be honest with you. I thought they separated these things by... No, nope, guess not. Here we go. Here's Rosianka right here. I have a Rosianka, by the way, in the ground in Zone 7A. It's a great tree, guys. Um, you know, they also develop these different characteristics, right? The hybrids, right? They may take on the tree size of an American persimmon versus the, you know, the smaller tree size of an Asian persimmon. It may be a totally different size tree. It looks like to me that Rosianka has taken on, I think it's more of an, uh, an American persimmon size tree than than an, than an Asian um, you know so let's read about it here for a second what do they recommend so they're saying six to uh, six to nine and you know what these zones can be played around with a little bit right you put this thing in a little bit of a hardier location you put it against the wall you spray it with some will proof you got some other sources of thermal mass you know you can you can stretch your zone a little bit here right you can do that so you know that's what I'm trying to say with this is that even though we got all these hardy varieties, genetics are, genetics are important. But we can achieve much hardier temperatures, much hardier trees by putting them in the right spot, right? Um, like I said, put them against the house, put a lot of stones around them. You can do Christmas lights, you can protect them, you can wrap them, and there's all kinds of different things you guys could do, depending on how obsessed you are with persimmons, right? But, you know, some of the more persimmons, let's get into that right now, all right? Let's just go into that. So you got all the American persimmons. We talked about that. We got all the all the hybrid persimmons um, are usually more hardier, right? But that leaves kind of the Asians, right? What it, what amongst the Asian varieties is hardy? And that's a great question. So we'll go into edible landscaping here. Get us some nice ideas. Any of the Jiro varieties are pretty hardy. Uh, there's a Mekawa Jiro here, Ichi Kike Jiro. Man, oh man, am I messing these up, right? There's a whole bunch of different types of Jiro fruits out there. There's one just called Jiro. Look, here's Jiro. All these guys are non-astringent and uh, quite early, actually. And they're actually pretty hardy. So you can go with those. Um, some other ones I'd recommend is, well, Edible Landscaping saying Shang is a good one. Seijo is one that I highly recommend. Great Wall is another one that I have. Guang Yang is another one that I have. That's also quite hardy. Uh, Hanafuyu, I believe, is another one. And uh, yeah, Edible Landscaping saying six to nine. So they've really put in some nice little care here. Miss Kim's another one that's definitely hardy. Um, Tam Cam is one. But you can see that on this website, Izu is another one. Uh, they are really paying attention, guys, to hardier varieties. Why? Because that's where they live. They live in a colder place. They want to make sure their trees are going to survive year after year. And if, even if they're in Zone 7 and the tree is only hardy to Zone 7, that's not going to necessarily guarantee the tree is going to live. For sure. 
right? If I want to put out a persimmon tree in the middle of my yard, unprotected from the cold and the wind, I want to make sure that tree is at least hardier to at least one, z one zone below my own, right? So if I'm in zone 7A, I want to make sure that variety is hardy to zone 6A, as an example, right? So it's really important that we're looking at that. Um, again, I would, I would certainly go with an Asian uh, variety of persimmon. I think they're a little bit more tasty. But again, the, the American persimmons are more hardy. And then that you know hybrid is a nice little cross between the two. Get yourself a nice little hybrid persimmon if you're really concerned with it. So, all right, guys, I think that's it. You know, there's probably more varieties we can add, and there's probably some varieties that you guys can add. If you got a you know variety that you want to mention down in the comments, please do. Let us all know. Let us know what you're growing and where you're growing it. And uh, yeah, catch you all soon. If you guys like this one, give me a thumbs up. Also, subscribe and follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And uh, I'll catch you all next time. All right? Take care.